Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another HB virtual class. Today, we're doing some sparkling wine. Again, my name is Cody Pennington. I'm the beer and wine manager at HB Plus in New Braunfels, number three. I'm joined by our fantastic moderator, Mino, today. Hello, sir. Welcome, everyone. My name is Mino Di Martino. I'm the HEB Beer and Wine Club Manager. Super excited to be here with this class and learn a lot about sparkling wine. Uh, I'm honored to be with Cody over here and I love the bubbles, so I'm very excited, like I said you before. And uh, I would like to welcome the audience. And uh, you are going to be have a treat special with the Cody as playing us all the wine over here. Cody, please. Yes, sir. So we're going to have a fantastic show today. we got four phenomenal sparkling wines from around the world. We're going to be starting with a fantastic Prosecco, of course, coming from Northeast Italy. We're then moving across the pond to Columbia Valley, which will be the Sato Saint Michel Brut Rosé, always a crowd favorite. Jumping back across to France in the Loire Valley, doing the Langlois Brut, another one of my personal favorites. And last but not least, we're going to do a fantastic Schramsberg. Mirabelle, which is a sparkly wine out of California, the northeast coast, super, super, excuse me, northwest coast, very solid products all the way around, but uh, Mino, ready for some fun? Yeah, that's uh, already a great explanation. We have some amazing wine this evening. Again, like I said, super excited, especially, uh, you know, most of you know I'm a born and raised in Italy. I love a Prosecco. So we're going to start with uh, this amazing Mionetto Prosecco was a village in the Northeast Italy, actually, and now is a subappellation, is a suburban, actually, of Treviso. Um, please, uh, Cody, take over with me. Let's uh, explain a little bit what grape they use on the Prosecco right now, since they changed a little bit the union the government, they changed a little bit the law in 2009. Yes, please. So we'll, Prosecco is going to be made with the Glera grape. Uh, fantastic, very light, very easy drinking, nice floral notes. Think more of your apple, peach, pear. Not sweet, but again, a little more of that softer, fruit forward, very easy drinking style. Uh, so I'll be going over both the methods that are made with the sparkling wine these days. Uh, this will actually be done more of the um, tank method, if you will. So a little easier to produce, not quite as difficult, not quite as expensive, but again, just great products. Proseccos are fantastic. Uh, entry level, getting into the sparkles. Um, yeah, just a great, easy pairing wine. Great for any occasion. Uh, like I said, in Italy, we drink this in afternoon or sometime in afternoon. Uh, in my house, even now, to be honest with the one I'm off, uh, a great way to entertain a friend, a friends, a family. And uh, like as Cody said, is uh, very friendly to your pocket. So a Prosecco, they are not very expensive bottle of uh, sparkling wine. And they are uh, some amazing juice. Cody also going to teach us how to open a bottle of a champagne because that time can be very challenging. And I get very excited because I have a 25 years of restaurant business prior to HUB. I saw he has a nice towel on his end. And please, Cody, take over. Yes, indeed. Uh, anytime you're opening a sparkle bottle, sparkling bottle of wine, uh, it's always nice to have a little uh, cloth, either a waiter napkin, if you will, a normal dishcloth, or even just a folded paper towel. Uh, Essentially what you're going to be doing is just kind of setting it over. This is preventing several things. One, the cork exploding and getting away from you. The pop sound that you've heard about many times, Hollywood's made famous, it's actually not a good thing. We're not looking for a big pop sound. We also want a very soft, conservative release of the cork. So uh, again, having this cloth right here on the odd occurrence that some wine happens to come out, that's okay. You already have a cloth ready to go, so it, you know, kind of preventing the mess before it happens. Uh, so what I like to do is after I remove the foil, grabbing the hold of the cage itself right here. Again, we already have the cloth in place. And then just undoing the cage right here from underneath. Cody, while you are opening, we already have our first question for Carly Gonzalez. How would you keep the Prosecco? What temperature on the Prosecco you keep chill? Are you chill the Prosecco? Are you chill about a bottle of champagne in general? No? But Absolutely. Uh, very easy just to throw it in the refrigerator for 30, maybe 45 minutes. It can never really be too cold. Of course, you don't want to throw it in your freezer like we discussed the last class. Uh, throwing it in the freezer actually is going to shock the wine. Definitely don't want to do that. A lot of hard work has gone into actually making the wine, so what you don't want to do is ruin it at the last minute. So let's, uh, you know, take our time and you know really appreciate it. So after I've removed the cage right here, I still have it actually firmly grasped here. What I'm going to want to do is instead of actually trying to pop the cork out, is actually I'm going to firmly hold the cork in my right hand, grab the bottle on my left. Again, I have the cloth right here. That cork's not going anywhere. I'm slowly going to twist the cork away from it. Creating a bit of a pop, and nothing as extensive or dramatic as one may and be used to. 
This is an amazing job uh, by Cody uh, explaining how to open a bottle of Prosecco. But Prosecco, like Cody said, is a super friendly sparkling wine that not just you can drink on any occasion, but also great for make uh, uh, sparkling wine cocktail like a Mimosa, Bellini. And uh, those are, again, all uh, friendly uh, and very easy to make. Uh, and uh, they are very good. Absolutely. So uh, again, with the... Uh the tank method, again, easier. The bubbles are gonna be not quite as fine. We will uh, be able to compare it towards the end, but uh, it seems a little frothier, a little, uh, little softer again, if you will. Very easy to pair this with food, although again, it doesn't need food pairing. Um, always a good shellfish. You could throw a little bit of a softer cheese in there as well. Again, those fruit notes are going to appear to be softer and lighter than some of the other ones that we're gonna be getting into. Uh, but to digress a little bit, so essentially with sparkling wine, uh, the styles are going to start off with brute, then extra dry, dry, demi sec, and then do, which is more of a sweeter one. So a lot of people see brute and they think, oh, that will actually be less dry than extra dry. Extra dry for us Americans, I think, is kind of the red flag of this is going to be really, really dry. Actually, brute will be drier than that. So if you are choosing wine, um, that is something to definitely keep in, keep in mind. Absolutely. After this, the Cody, we're going to move from a Prosecco. I believe we are moving to a, uh, the other plight. We have a Chateau Saint-Michel over here, right? Yes, indeed. With the amazing rosé over there. A little fun fact about the Chateau Saint-Michel uh, is around, uh, the one is around 20 miles from Seattle on the Washington state. Uh, the oldest winery in, uh, in the area of there, and they make some amazing juice, and uh, these rosé are stunning. Um, I love rosé, bubbly rosé, I love rosé in general, but this one actually for the value that we have, it's a great uh, wine. Cody, please. Absolutely. So I, uh, again, I think we discussed in the last class, the color from wine itself is gonna come from the grape skin. So as long as the juice is in contact with the skin after you've clipped it and pressed it, uh, it's trying to turn itself to be red. Again, this is done with a Pinot Noir and a Meunier grape. So higher acidity, again, the bubbles are already gonna kind of add that effervescence, that kind of buzz to the wine itself. But a beautiful color of uh, lighter red right here. So instead of the apple, peach, pear notes, think more of your strawberry, maybe a, maybe a light raspberry taste in there as well. You can easily still add a little orange juice to make a mimosa with this as well. Not that I'm forcing you to do that by any means. But uh, anytime I've added orange juice to a uh, sparkling rosé, I kind of actually create more of a tropical fruit note. So uh, those mango, papaya, even you know, pineapple notes kind of come out. It's a little different, but it's a little fun to have as well. Um, I've always had a little uh, success throwing a fresh raspberry or strawberry in there as well, so make it a little bit more fun. Always True. good for the. So, Cody, are you pair of this one? Are you pair of these? Uh, couple, give us a couple uh, food idea or how to pair these uh, already the prosecco, those bubbly uh, bubbly wines. Yeah. So uh, again, bubbles literally go with everything. It's it's very easy to uh, to look like a hero. Uh, again, the shellfish. Uh, I'm a big fan of oysters. Oysters on the half shell. Always a proud favorite. Uh, we were discussing uh, tarts, uh, even dessert items as well. Key lime tart, I think, is something that's very easy to, to go after. A little bit of that graham cracker, those fresh key limes in there, a little bit of that whipped cream on top kind of adds that fluffier Absolutely. note to it. Anytime you have bubbles, all the bubbles are representing acidity. So having something a little creamier actually kind of softens a little bit as well. Uh, I think we talked in our last class about a heavier cream sauce on top of a dish. Again, we're trying to complement but not compete. So the bubbles, again, will cut through that acidity. So this being very effervescent, very acidic up front, uh, is a great way to calm it down with the food and actually complete the meal. Another way I like, actually, I got to take it from my wife. She loves the rosé. She likes uh, Central Market chocolate. So the truffle over there, I love uh, all of those. Personally, I also like fried chicken with this one over here because go. of the crispness. So the cleaning uh, part is a rinser on the palate over there. Hi, we have already another question for uh, our... Uh, uh, some of our guests over here, Han asked, I ever hear that never to record or seal a bubble because the, you, the more you use the mobile bottle escape. True, uh, uh, on this one over there, usually you want to use a bottle of wine, uh, uh, bottle of champagne, you don't want uh, after one day, uh, if there is the champagne cork, you can cork and put on the fridge, but no more than a day because it's true, you're going to lose the fraction of the bubble. Yes. Very, very true. Uh, the cork and the uh, champagne, with all the pressure that it's been under, it essentially balloons open, if you can see that. Uh, different than most any other cork. Any other cork, you pop it out, it essentially stays the same size. This actually will kind of balloon open, so it makes it almost impossible to put that back in there. 
Now, HEB does sell a great number of products that are uh, easy to plug. Again, this is not a fail safe and we're going to put it back in the cupboard or the refrigerator for an extended period of time with bubbles. Just like opening a fresh Coca-Cola, something like that, those bubbles are there, but you know, for a perceived amount of time, they're not going to be there forever. So you, you again, want to kind of enjoy the bottle once you've opened it. And with the celebration or with any occasion, you want to... And the with the bottle. friends and the reality, uh, a bottle of wine is four glasses, so it's four glass of wine. So if you have a friends, basically two glass, two glass each, pretty healthy. So <laughs> I don't want to say in that way, but yes, uh, champagne, you want to keep it fresh. Right now, after this, the code is already doing an amazing job, like I said. Thank you very much to explain in a simple way all of us how to just open the bottle, how to serve the bottle, what pairing we use. So we are moving now, I believe, with the next one. We are moving across country, across, we are going in France with, I believe, yes, uh, Langua, which is a Cremant. And uh, this is one of my favorite. I love Cremant, and Cody will uh, explain all the difference between Cremant, Champagne, and the rest. Absolutely. So it used to be when you say champagne, most people were just referring to sparkling wine. Well, French have a law where you cannot call a wine champagne unless it is from Champagne region of France. So everybody in the world kind of had to step back and say, we're going to call it sparkling wine. Now, some people have branched out Prosecco from Italy, of course. You're going to have your Cava's from Spain. Those are essentially just going to be sparkling wine from those areas. Now, Cava and Champagne are made pretty much the same way as far as the more traditional style. Anytime you see Cremant on a label, or a traditional, I believe as well, uh, that's essentially saying it's done in the old world style. Uh, to make the traditional method, you're essentially starting with a base wine. So think your Chardonnay, um, Chenin Blanc, things like that. You're gonna start with that. You're then actually gonna add a little bit of sugar, a little bit of yeast to the wine itself. This kind of begins the secondary fermentation process where alcohol percentage goes up a little bit, but you're essentially letting the wine kind of kind of you know, settle itself a little bit as well, start to gain its complexity. Uh, around that time, after about 12 months or so, you're actually going to then uh, cork the bottle mm -hmm. and you actually put it in an A-frame. You're gonna start horizontal. They've been doing this for hundreds of years. And over to the period of a couple of weeks, you're actually turning it from horizontal up to vertical. What this does is this really kind of uh, stresses it a little bit, but also all that carbon dioxide that's being created is becoming tighter, more firm, and it's slowly creating those bubbles up to the top. And at that point, the yeast has kind of collected down here, here to the bottom. So again, this bottle essentially will be upside down. Uh, you then at that point, they will actually kind of freeze this. So what that does is that kind of, um, in a way, stops the process. I guess the yeast and the sugar are kind of frozen right there. The plug itself, because the wine is not fully corked at that point, there's actually a plug that is acting as the cork will then be able to be removed. They then top off the wine, excuse me, top off the bubbles with a little more of the base wine. And then from that point, you can actually add sugar to it as well. Uh, the lighter the sugar, obviously the drier the wine will be. So your brute wines, again, you will be adding a little bit of sugar, but if you're wanting to really make more of a, the extra dry to the demi-sec, the more fruit forward style, then obviously you'll be adding a little bit more sugar to that as well. But honestly, it just depends on what style you're Yes, making. absolutely. And also a couple of fun facts about Cremant. There is three different kinds of Cremant. There is a Cremant de Loire, Cremant de Bourgogne, and Cremant de La Salle. Um, they are all different, obviously on the terroir, on the soil, they all they'll taste a little different. And I, like I said, I love uh, Cremant. It's an amazing alternative to Champagne uh, because the Champagne is an, at times cannot be very friendly to my pocket. But Cremant for just half of the price, I can get the same value that uh, on the flavor that I get from the Champagne just because always come from France, amazing wine. And uh, just like Cody said, great, great value as well for, uh, for what you get. Um, Absolutely. Cody, what else uh, you can say about Cremant? What the grape inside? Of, what, can you explain a little bit? Of, you, I know you already did a touch, but uh, explain us a little more the difference between a Cremant and a Prosecco. You already touched up on both sides. Sure, sure. Uh, so again, uh, a little more, a little harder to make. And again, you're doing, a, instead of just one grape bridal being the glare right over here, you actually be doing have the Cab Franc, the Chenin Blanc, and the Chardonnay. So you're kind of making that blend. You'll also notice in most sparkling wines that you will not see a vintage or a or a year that the wine was actually made on here. Reason for that is they are essentially gonna take that wine that they made that year, that base, and actually adding a little bit of years past to kind of make a blend to actually create a very consistent product year after year. What they're wanting to do is when you come back in to the store and you are hoping to purchase another one of the bottles that you had last year or if that last special occasion, you're wanting that consistency. You're wanting to know that you're going to get that same quality, that same style all the way through. So what they're doing is they're kind of doing the work for you and saying, we 
guaranteed that this will taste the way it's supposed to taste. So if you want more of the, uh, uh, I guess the, the riddle of what you may be purchasing, uh, this might not be for you because this, again, there's, for the most part, going to be a very consistent product. And uh, Cody, uh, another big question we always get when a, a customer uh, arrives to our wine department, and a lot of question. Uh, another, uh, what we'll give the bubble? We'll give the bubble to the sparkling wine. Uh, how it's made? How we get to all these uh, effervescence or these sparkling? Absolutely. So the bubbles themselves will be coming from the carbon dioxide. So actually making the wine again itself, or excuse me, making the sparkling wine, uh, will again come from that base. But the carbon dioxide is what makes the bubbles this tight. And you will absolutely see the quality in a very nicely done sparkling wine or champagne just by tasting it. Uh, for me myself, I've never gotten as much fruit flavors. Uh, I'm sure as most haven't either. They tend to not be that fruit forward, uh, you know, apple peach that we talked about more in the Prosecco. This will be, again, drier, but you actually slowly will start tasting more of a toasty, kind of a yeasty, almost like a buttered toast yep. kind of flavors to it. Uh, this does come with time. As more wines you taste, your palate will obviously continue to uh, to improve. But this is something, uh, again, you can you can have with an appetizer. You can start getting into the, uh, the salad courses and, and stuff as well. I think a seafood salad with this is, is phenomenal. I mean, it, uh, it really kind of livens up the taste buds. Again, the effervescence, the bubbles attack the front part of the tongue, and then the fruit, other notes start coming in as well. Then you add a little bit of food with that, and it's just, you're in a beautiful place. Cody, great, again, a great, uh, great way to explain to all of us how it's done. But I have another question for uh, Naomi. Any recommendation for glasses to use to optimize the sparkling wine? What's your recommendation to use? Yes, I would definitely go, uh, definitely go the flute. Um, so this will be a thinner, slender version. We uh, do have white wine glasses as well. Uh, essentially, a red wine glass will be nice and big. White wine, a little smaller. The flute is like this for a reason. It actually allows the bubbles to really get out and sing it. And I saw that on those glass, do we sell a HEB? Or where we can buy, where they are located next to the wine aisle? Yes, we're going to the kitchen table Flutes right here for you. Uh, every HEB department, or excuse me, every HEB wine department will have a little kitchen gadget aisle to come along with it as well, including your wine stoppers, your wine openers. Uh, glassware will mostly be in there as well. We have a, a great uh, uh, department that kind of you know plays with different price points as well. We don't you know look for the super expensive. We don't look for the super cheap. We kind of offer different varieties for depending you know on Absolutely. what you're trying to uh, trying to accomplish that evening. So yeah, yeah. The glassware is definitely a vital piece in making making a hole, if you will. Also, through the store, like we said, you know, you're gonna need a Perry. So, you know, we are a grocery store, so we don't just have a glassware. Obviously, we have a wine. We also have a chocolate. We have a seafood. Yeah, so you can make uh, a tour around the store to fill your basket. That's what we're looking for. I mean, well, so. Uh, again, amazing explanation, Cody, on uh, our uh, Cremant. Uh, right now, I believe we are moving uh, to one of my favorite sparkling wine and uh, from uh, Schranzburg, from California. And uh, Cody, please. Yes, yeah, so the last wine uh, for the evening will actually be the Mirabelle from Schranzburg. Fantastic product. Uh, these other uh, these other wines are all good in their own way. Uh, also nicely priced. Uh, beginning over here with the Prosecco, we actually are right around the twelve ninety eight price point. The Michelle over here will be about twelve ninety eight thirteen dollars, right in that range as well. The Langlois right over here is just under twenty at eighteen ninety eight nineteen ninety eight. And last but not least will be this lovely Mirabelle right over here, less than forty dollars. It's actually priced at twenty two twenty three ninety eight, right in that range. Uh, so fantastic product. You're essentially getting the same quality as a wine made in uh, Champagne, France, but for local prices, which is yep. always a good thing. I'm actually going to be opening up this wine for you as well, just so you again see the process, and I'll go maybe a little slower this time. So again, moving the, uh, the foil around right here for you. Taking that off. And I promise you, this is uh, one of the best uh, sparkling wine for California. For uh, some of you who would like to visit uh, Napa uh, any times after COVID, I would suggest to visit the uh, Schranzburg because it's one of the most beautiful uh, winery up there, it's been there in a for a long, long time, and they make amazing sparkling wine. Even the, the rosé is my favorite for them, I want to be honest with you. But overall, they, they do a great job. The Davis family is uh, just amazing. And uh, please, Cody, you see great job over there, outstanding. All controlled, right there for you. Again, you can see how quickly that 
fourth really balloons up and is really wanting to show off, you know, all the quality that was really put in it. Again, Hugh Davies is uh, making some fantastic stuff, and his personal goal, again, is to make the best sparkling wine that America could make. Cody, and also we have another question for uh, Miss Washington, I believe. Would you throw some more pairing suggestion on those uh, on those sparkling wine? Certainly. Uh, well, we touched on the sea bass, or excuse me, the uh, shellfish a little bit. Uh, something like this, I would definitely venture your HEB uh, seafood department. They've got some fantastic stuff, fresh fish flown in every day. Sea bass for me has always been kind of a crowd favorite. It's a large white plate fish. Uh, something with a little bit of risotto, I think, would go nicely with it. Uh, butter poached even. Pan seared on the oven, just sort of drizzle a little bit of butter on top of that as well. You can add a little garlic, a little herbs in there as well. But the risotto, something already creamy and rich like that. Adding this on top of that, the bubbles, the creaminess, again, they work nicely together. So I would do a, a nicer white plate fish. Yeah, I'm going to suggest another because I love scallops myself. I love scallops. Oh, yeah. I want to be honest. This is my favorite, especially with that one over there because it's a little more brighter, sparkling wine. Uh, my favorite recipe on scallops, I stop at the deli and I buy the HEB prosciutto. And then I buy the U10 scallops at the seafood department. I wrap the, prosciutto, the scallops on prosciutto. Nice chunk of butter on the pan. It's very hot. Nice. And just one minute upside down. And you can enjoy an amazing meal with this great champagne. Because this uh, sparkling wine to serve some amazing food. Yes, you actually reminded me of a personal favorite dish I always love to have. is uh, Actually, with scallops, you, actually, uh, you can blacken them as well. Get some of those large diverse sea scallops. Just, just beautiful. I mean, again, we're already having sparkling, or excuse me, bubbles to go with it. So, you know, just grab the bigger scallops and really making it a, a, a night of it all. Uh, there is a green apple salsa that I've always done as well. You can even do that with mango. I mentioned the green apple because these flavors are getting away from the apples that we would have over here, uh, your traditional red apples or even honey crisp, if you will. Think more of the Granny Smith apples, that little more tartness, that little more of acidity. When you bite into that Granny Smith apple, yes, you're getting the, the apple as a whole, but if you just remove the skin itself, there's that tartness, that acidity, that's closer to what this would taste like. Uh, not to say I want you sitting there eating Granny Smith apple skins, but that's the same kind of tartness you would uh, perceive when you have something like this. I have another question, and this is a fun one, I like that. There is there any other untraditional food that go well with sparkling wine, like Snickers? I love Snickers myself. Oh, Snickers, I yeah. guess you can pair with the, anything, but yeah. I would say the Snickers and bacon is pretty much, you know, you can go, actually that's probably a good uh, little side recipe there for us. Seems like Snickers would go with everything. Bacon seems to go with everything. Bubbles goes with everything. I'm sure we can make up a, a dish right there with just with just those two. And also, uh, Cody, during this, this time of the year, obviously we are uh, during the holidays. Do you have any wine sale coming up or the sparkling wine that uh, we yep. are uh, approaching the the New Year's? Yes, indeed. Uh, definitely one of the best times of the year. We are doing our Primo Pick sparkling wine sale. It actually starts the 24th, going all the way through the first. All the sparkling wines that are Primo Picks will actually be marked 10% off. Of course, if you decide to get six or more of those same Primo Picks, they would get an additional 10% off. So there's your 20% savings right there. Again, with COVID going on this year, we want everyone to be socially distant. So friends and neighbors, you know, keep their distance. But, you know, you can still buy some bubbles, still buy some Cabernet while the Cabernet sale is going on right now as well. So save a little bit of money. So it's a good time this of the year. This year with the COVID, we suggest you to buy a couple of bottles just to welcome the 2021. One with your left hand, one your right hand. There you go. Celebrate the big time. That's what I'm going to do with Your spouse uh, is going to want their own bottle. That's right. Yes, yes. So, no judgment there. So. Again, Cody, you are doing an amazing job out to explain. So let's recap a little bit uh, how to open the bottle, like you said. How, most important, how the perfect temperature, how, the, how you chill a bottle of champagne. Just a quick recap. Of, of course, uh, refrigeration, uh, always the easiest. Uh, most HEB beer and wine departments should have a cold wine uh, box or refrigerator right there for you. So they've already done you know, at least the initial process for you. Uh, again, if you're ever in a bind, do not throw it in the freezer. That is, that is the sucker bet. Do not do that. Uh, if you are in a bind and you only have a couple of minutes, bucket of ice, a little bit of water, throw the bottle in there. And actually, again, spinning the wine itself will actually kind of create that vortex. It kind of chills the bottle a little bit quicker as well. Plus, it just looks like you're doing something awesome while the spouse is cooking. You're also cooking. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm also helping right here. But yeah, very easy process just to do that. Uh, but going back to the very first one, the Prosecco, now that we have all four wines open, Happy to pour the Prosecco here next to the last one. Again, you will see the quality. You can't taste it at the moment, but buy your own and do your own uh, example here. I don't know if you can see how much larger and frothier and fluffier these bubbles are. Again, in the uh, bubble or the sparkling wine world, you are looking for smaller, tight, little, little, little bubbles. 
That exactly what uh, Cody said. The rule of thumb when you go on our grocery store to come on our aisle or any other retailer, hopefully you come and HB a shop with us. Um, basically, when you buy a little more uh, expensive bottle of champagne, it's all about on the quality of the bubble. The smaller the bubble, the better quality on the rule of thumb is. And uh, that's what makes fun and the quality, the acidity. And um, that's all there, to be honest with you. Cody, please. Of course, yeah, it's, it is that time of the year. Uh, again, like we talked last class, uh, opening a bottle of wine is always an occasion. For bubbles, you don't really need food with them. You don't really need a special occasion. Although we are going into the holidays, so it is actually the perfect time to celebrate. Again, save a little bit of money with that sale. Uh, we have some fantastic products all the way around. Please talk to your beer and wine stewards if you have someone there. Open up to them a little bit. Let them know what you're having for dinner that evening. Let them know what you honestly like. If you, if you don't like a certain style, if you don't like a certain sweetness or something too dry, just tell them. We're happy to help match anything you like. I actually like most, ask most of my customers what they're having for dinner that night versus, hey, I'm having steak. What do you, what do you suggest? It's like, well, what kind of steak are we asking for? What are we pairing with it? Are we doing with the sauce? How are we cooking it? Kind of like we talked about last class, but the more, uh, more questions, more answers we can kind of work together on, we can kind of pair you with that perfect wine. We, we're definitely not intimidating. We want to be very welcoming as well. We're very hospitable for beer and wine for the HEB department. So yeah, please come on by, ask us any questions. We're more than happy to help you find the perfect bottle of wine for you. And if we don't know the answer, we're knowledgeable enough to look it up with you. We want to educate you while educating ourselves. It honestly makes best for both of us. So. A great tip by Cody. I applaud you for those because at times the people do, they do get a little bit intimidated coming in our aisle, but we are, you know, we are, uh, we like wine, we drink wine, we are, uh, we try not to be anything offensive or anything. So yeah, please always stop by us. We have a lot of tips for you. Also other suggestions on Cabernet or Pinot Noir. And uh, feel free to ask any other question. We are, uh, we are in our aisle, not just to help you. It's customer service, everything what we preach, uh, in our, especially on the beer wine department, but all over the store. We have uh, our next class now, for tomorrow as well, for some of our audience who will join tomorrow, our next class tomorrow is going to be at 5.30. It's the brunch leftover. And yeah. uh, you can sign up at hb.com slash class. Absolutely. So, and uh, 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 Cody, please, uh, any, I don't have any other question for uh, our uh, panelists. Cody has, uh, did an amazing job. Oh, thank you very much. Always good to see you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you yes. for having me, uh, for uh, having uh, me join you. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I learned a lot Always. from you and I really appreciate it. I would like to say thank you to everyone joining us. Happy holidays to you and your family, to all HEB family, and happy holiday to you as well, sir. Likewise, my friend. Y'all take care. Uh, again, take care of your friends, your neighbors. Have fun. Grab some bubbles out there. Be safe. Let's be done with 2020. And uh, yeah, let's welcome 2021 the right way and do it with style. Salute. Cheers. Enjoy.